This video is sponsored by Fickle Dice Games, but more on that later. Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and I'm joined by Kira. And in this video, we're going to look at some of our favourite paints. Some paints we can't live without and we think you shouldn't live without. And one or two that we just never really use and don't really like that much as well. So some, some ups and some downs for you. And we're not looking at just things like Lead Belcher, Fist and Red, the, the basic base paints, right? These are like the next load of paints we use all the time, right? Layer two paint, but base paint. What are you talking With about? With rust. We'll catch you in a minute. These days we are spoiled for choice when it comes to paints. With new products, brands and ranges coming out all the time, it's hard to try everything. We'll be looking at the paints we use the most, the ones we are always looking to use because honestly, they're just really good. These will be the perfect addition to your set and I promise you, they won't disappoint. So first up is Retributor Armor Gold and Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint, both from Citadel Color. And I'm kind of pairing these together because I always use them together. This gold is my all time favorite gold, Retributor Armor. It is so smooth. The color is just fantastic and it's got really good coverage as well. What more could you want really? That's what it looks like with two coats. Then we go over the top with some Gilliman Flesh. I picked this tip up from Juan Hidalgo. I watched this on his YouTube and I've not been able to stop doing it since. I used to use Reichton Flesh Shade over gold, which is nice, but this is just a little bit more extreme and kind of weathers it a little bit more. It's just, I just love it. I love it. It looks great. One of my top recommendations is Vallejo Game Colors Tinny Tin. They're a popular brand, so I'm sure you'll be able to get hold of it easily enough. First and foremost, its coverage is nothing short of remarkable, making it the perfect choice as a foundation for creating copper or brass. Whether you're painting corn berserkers, chaos knights, or adorning any armor, Tinny Tin proves to be your steadfast companion. To add depth and dimension to your work, a touch of Agrax or Targa Raid Shade is all it takes. Next for me is Rackarth Flesh, which you would think is kind of a boring color to pick, but my God, this one just comes in so handy so often. You can use it as a base for some really, really pale flesh, or you can use it for parchment, paper, any of that kind of stuff. The reason that I like this is because it's got such a fabulous coverage for such a light paint. So if you've base coated your model dark and you're looking to paint something light or white or yellow, I always go with Rackarth Flesh first because that's gonna give you the coverage and then you can pop a lighter color over that if you need to. Allow me to introduce our absolute top pick in the world of painting and effects, Dirty Down Rust. It's a true game changer that Kira and I both swear by. Learning how to use it may take a bit of practice, but trust me, it's worth every effort. To get the best finish, you need to grab a trusty hairdryer and give it a blast. That's when you'll witness the magic truly come to life. The more water you add, the lighter the rust finish becomes. Take a look at this Necron completely shrouded in a rusty embrace, while the giant has just a hint of this thin rust applied. It really is that good. Next is Targo Raid Shade, which was one of the newer colors that they have brought out for Citadel Color. This is my secret weapon. I use this all the time. I use this to bring life back into skin when I'm airbrushing. I use this a lot if I can't decide between a purple wash and an Agrax wash, a purple or brown wash, because this kind of hits in the middle. It's just so handy. It's something you never think to use, but you should really get your hands on it. Before we dive back into the action, let's take a moment to talk about our video sponsors, Fickle Dice Games. They have something special brewing over on Kickstarter and you won't want to miss it. Introducing Gloom Trench 1926. I was lucky enough to get a sneak peek at these incredible pieces and let me tell you, they are awesome. Whether you're into 28 mm scale battles or prefer other sizes, they've got you covered as these pieces are easily modified to suit your needs. These trenches are compatible with both FDM and SLA printers, making them accessible to a wide range of hobbyists. But wait, there's more. Fickle Dice Games is giving you a chance to experience their trench system quality firsthand with a free sample pack. You can test drive this epic terrain and other goodies before you decide to back the project. Thanks to my mini factory, backers will have direct access to the files in their library once the project is complete. So if you're itching to support this fantastic project and get your hands on these game-changing terrain pieces, don't hesitate. Click on the link in the description and pledge your support. Let's come together to unlock even more exciting parts of Gloom Trench 1926. Right, let's get back to the video. Up next for me is Black Legion Contrast by Games Workshop. Now, I know what you're thinking, we already have Black Templar Contrast, but trust me, this one is just better. I find it's really easy to work with, has just the right amount of opacity, and it thins down really well. Like all contrasts, if applied over a lighter base, it'll do a lot of the highlighting work for you. 
No, it isn't an exciting paint, but it's a time saver and one I use on pretty much every model. Right, you're going to have to hear me out with this one. Ice yellow. Model color, Vallejo, ice yellow. I struggle to actually get across why I like this and why it's so good, but I think what it comes down to is it's a really good way to lighten and brighten a color without desaturating it. I'm going to show you on the palette here when you blend from a dark blue to a light blue, uh, the difference between using a white and using the ice yellow. It's not the perfect example just blended out on a palette like this. So I'm going to show you now on the hallowed night that I painted, the pauldron, the little spot highlight, the little ding of light, I used ice yellow right there and I think it looks fantastic. This one is a sort of two-part paint. Skeleton Horde over Screaming Skull or another off-white paint. I've always struggled to paint bone quickly and effectively. I either resort to my airbrush to get a smooth transition or I take forever badly blending with a brush. In comes Skeleton Horde a contrast paint that sits somewhere between Agrag's Earthshade and Reichland Flesh Safe. It has just the right amount of yellowiness to pass for a good bone colour. Let it dry, hit it with a dry brush and some edge highlighting, and voila, perfect bone every time. Okay, I brought Agrag's sewer out as it was in my no-go pile. Never use it, couldn't figure out a use for it. Wasn't the nicest brown. Sigor brown and Wildwood were so much nicer. Then I put it on this mini and I thought this would actually make a really nice like wood color, paint some trees, paint some bark. Um, so I take it all back. You can probably find a good use for this. Oopsie. One paint I have just never gotten on with, Orc Flesh. Now this goes for the Vallejo, Army Painter and pretty much any other Orc Flesh in a bottle paint. Something just feels off. The green hues aren't right. They range from the Hulk to radioactive slime. I don't know, I guess if you don't mind a weird green, maybe it's for you, but I've never found a place for it. And there you have it, the top paints we recommend and some we don't. Have you personally tried any of these before, or if not, are you going to give them a go? I'd actually love to hear what your top paints are because without trying everything, it's hard to know just which ones are good. So let us know in the comments below. So there you have it. What do you think? Do any of these make your list on the goes or the no's? I'm interested to find out. Also, I know you got to do the rust one, even though that's kind of top of my list. If I can find a way to put that on a mini, I will. Um, that's kind of my top tier, but it's sort of your top tier too. So you Yeah, R rust, then verdigris, then moss for those, but they are all amazing and yeah. But just any, any paint or effect, I try and slap that on every model. That's my absolute favorite. Um, it's funny as well, the blooming Garagak sewer. Me thinking I, I didn't like it, and then I'm like, oh, it's actually nice. It's quite good. <laughs> yeah, you'll find a place for that. It said good for wood. Um, if you had to pick one here, that you would say, right, get that, what would it be? Rust effect. I would say rust is brilliant, but I'd also say tinny tin. We often get people come in the shop and say, oh, you know, what's a couple of good paints, what's something? And all of these are ones we just use on pretty much every model at every given opportunity, right? Yeah. And that's the whole point. So, you know what they are? Let us know what your favorite paints are, because there's probably some we've never heard of or never tried too, right? So do keep an eye down in the comments. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the alarm bell. Check out all the other videos as well. Check out the links in the comments and description section. There's a bit down there for the shop, for Patreon, Discord, and Kira's Twitch. Yes. Other than that, I think we're good. All right, let's go. Bye. <laughs>